Hello, I'm Peter, and I'm going to talk about a data engineering project which I undertook with the ASI. The background of this project is Sherlock ML. Sherlock ML, to briefly introduce it, because I'm aware there's going to be some additional information later on, is a unique platform that was developed by the SI and which allows data scientists to do data science on the cloud. That means you can open a browser, you can conduct an entire data science project from start to finish only using the browser. That's clearly a powerful thing. One of the aspects which Sherlock Mel aims to make life easier for data science and data scientists relates to the aspect of data exploration. It's been found that data scientists spend a lot of time conducting additional data analysis. So when you're opening a project and you start up, you read in your data set, you'll do quite a lot of exploration at the beginning of the project. So the way Sherlock ML aims to help with this is by providing a component called Lens, which aims to alleviate this. So the idea is you read in your data set, you click a, click a button, and it performs this initial data exploration for you, returning some summary statistics. So if you're performing correlation al analysis, for example, it will do that for you. It will also estimate distributions, identify which of the variables in your table are categorical and which are continuous. And my project related to this lens library, and in particular, it considered the aspect of user experience. So user experience is important. When you upload your data set and you click that button, you don't want to be waiting forever. So how do we make this fast? That's the essence of this project. OK, so to start with, we're looking at how fast this lens library is. So the first thing to do is to get some data, to run it against the lens library, and to see how well it performs. And what we see is, it performs reasonably quickly for relatively small data sets. But looking towards the bottom, for a medium-sized data set consisting of 5,000 or so rows with 53 columns, well, 22 minutes, that's perhaps not so ideal. So how do we make this better? OK, so with that in mind, the next step is to drill down a little further. So I already mentioned that Lens does a number of things in the background. And essentially what it does is it invokes a number of routines. So we want to look at which of these routines occupy the most of the execution time. There are seven routines in total. And looking at these data sets, what comes out of it is that two of the routines figure substantially. So the first is column summary. But by far, the pairwise density outweighs. So if we want to make lens run fast, we need to improve this pairwise density function. Now, the background to this is something called kernel density estimation. In a nutshell, kernel density estimation is a technique which allows us to estimate the distribution of our data. So for example, when we're comparing two columns in lens, we can visualize that using an image. So this allows us to identify where the data are concentrated. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on how kernel density estimation works, but suffice to say, I spent some time looking at the algorithmic details of how kernel densi density estimation works. And one way to do kernel density estimation is to use a library like scikit-learn. Scikit-learn is great because the implementation there is very general. You put in your data, and then you can compute the image that you get out in the end. It works, but it's perhaps 
not as ideal for the purposes that we're looking for here. So, with that in mind, I set about developing a customized kernel <coughs> density estimation routine to replace this one included in scikit-learn. And I applied my knowledge of signal processing for that, and in particular, the aspect that ultimately we're creating an image, so the data are arranged in an array, so we can use things like NumPy, for example. So the replacement is called a smooth histogram. And once that's been developed, the next task is to test how well it works. So one way you can do that is to compare it to the existing approach, right? A visual explanation will reveal whether the new approach works, and I found it did. It's also possible to do that numerically, so I found that it works within a 5% tolerance, which is good enough for this uh, application here. Well, okay, so that goes back into the lens library. It's the new approach, and we want to know how well it performs. Well, I can say it performs well. In general, it has a lower computational complexity. That means that as you scale the size of the data set up, you'll probably get larger gains in execution time. And for this largest data set, which I mentioned earlier on, it goes from 22 minutes to about two and a half minutes. Okay, so to briefly conclude, this project looked at the performance of the Lens Library, which is a part of the Sherlock ML platform. And in particular, it considered the pairwise density estimation problem. As part of that, I looked at it as an alternative solution based on smooth histograms, and that approach works well. It's a replacement for the original approach. And that, in turn, improves the user experience. Thank you very much. <laughs>